Last time we arrived at an incredibly powerful tool in mathematics, science, and engineering, the complex plane. The complex plane is an extension of the number line where we include the imaginary dimension vertically. Just as we can plot xy coordinates on the xy plane, we can plot complex numbers on the complex plane. This arrangement is why Gauss preferred the term lateral over imaginary and inverse instead of negative. Gauss suggested that we should call the numbers to the right of the origin direct, the numbers to the left of the origin inverse, and the numbers above and below the origin lateral. Now that we've seen the complex plane, let's discuss why it's so powerful. We've seen two-dimensional planes before, where each axis represents a different quantity. In fact, we started our whole conversation with one. In a normal xy plane, there's no required connection between the dimensions, no rules about how they should relate to each other. On the complex plane, however, we have the rules of algebra with complex numbers we discussed earlier. These rules impose a very specific and useful relationship between the two dimensions. The first rule is how complex numbers add and subtract. The real and imaginary parts add independently, making complex numbers and the complex plane useful for problems involving motion in two dimensions. If we travel in one direction for a certain distance, and then in another direction, we can add the components of each part of our trip together to find the total distance we have traveled in each direction. So that's cool, but as you may already know, we can do the same exact thing with vectors. Where complex numbers get really interesting is through multiplication. We can multiply complex numbers together by foiling, just as we do with binomials in algebra, with the minor complication that we know i squared can be replaced with minus 1. This is a perfectly valid algebraic solution to our problem, but is only half the picture. There is another equally valid way to think about multiplying complex numbers, and it has everything to do with the complex plane. Instead of just telling you what this interpretation is, it'll be way more fun to try to figure it out with some examples. To discover this deeper meaning for yourself, all you need to know is the following. How to multiply complex numbers algebraically as we just did. How to plot numbers on the complex plane the Pythagorean theorem, and finally how to use arctangent to find angles. What's cool here is that if you're able to figure this out, you'll have discovered for yourself a super useful bit of math that was unknown to the smartest mathematicians on the planet until only two centuries ago. Next time, we'll uncover this interpretation of complex multiplication using the complex plane, and we're going to do it with four examples. 4 plus 3i times i, 4 plus 3i times 2i, 4 plus 3i times itself, and finally, 2 plus i times 1 plus 2i. Through considering each of these problems on the complex plane, and looking at the patterns that naturally emerge, we'll arrive at the deeper meaning we're searching for. Do try this at home. You'll find a link below to the problem statement on the Welch Labs blog. Even if you're already a boss at complex numbers, or if you have no idea what I'm talking about, I promise it's a valuable process. And we'll sort out all the details next time.